The final boss of Power World commits to its role as a massive challenge for any player to contend with. This monster has an absolutely massive move pool and can deal ridiculous amounts of damage, but with the right preparation and tactics, we can take him down easily. So first, let's check out his moveset. Shadowbeak has two different beam style attacks. One is dark type and the other is common type, meaning he has great coverage here. With both of these moves, Shadowbeak will charge what looks like a ball in front of him before unleashing a devastating beam of damage that has good tracking and mobility. If you take the full force of this attack, it will shred your shield and health. The only way to avoid it is to wait until the exact moment it fires and then keep dodging sideways until the attack is finished. Divine Disaster is Shadowbeak's exclusive move. He will rear up and then charge forwards, dealing huge damage if you get caught in this. Balls of light will be left in his wake, which after a delay will start firing fast projectiles at you. You can deal with this attack by dodging out of the road of Shadowbeak's initial charge and then using the pillars in the room to shield you from the projectiles. Another signature move specifically of Victor's Shadowbeak is Dark Wisp. Similar to Spirit Flame, which Shadowbeak can also use, many dark orbs will be summoned that will start tracking you heavily. They move relatively slowly but deal a lot of damage and trying to tank too many of these is an easy way to die fast. Both Dark Wisp and Spirit Flame can be avoided by sprinting to the side and then around them in an arc, causing them to drop into the floor behind you. Since Shadowbeak is a dark type pal, he subsidizes his move pool with some ice type attacks for coverage against his dragon type weakness. All of these have a chance of freezing you, which can mean a guaranteed death if you get unlucky with Shadowbeak following up with a nastier attack. If you get a red circle beneath your feet, then a moment later an ice shard will burst from the ground, dealing very high damage and potentially stunning you for a brief moment. If you are being mobile throughout the fight, as you should be, then you will probably miss this attack anyway. Be aware, it is hard to see this attack coming if you are aiming down your sights, so be prepared to dodge quickly. One of Shadowbeak's trickier moves to avoid is his Ice Blast. It will summon a ball of ice over his head for a moment before firing it at you, dealing absolutely massive damage. Now that's bad enough, but Icy Mist will quickly spread from the point of impact, dealing yet again another massive burst of damage. The only way to reliably avoid this is to dodge sideways right as the ice would hit you, and then immediately dodge in the same direction to outpace the mist. Crisp Breath is a move that you will have seen in varying types from many enemies so far. Shadowbeak will close the distance a little and then channel a freezing breath attack with limited range. Simply getting out of range will afford you some time to get some damage in while Shadowbeak continues the attack animation. Another attack you will commonly have seen from as early as Pengullet at the beginning of the game is the Ice Volley. This summons three projectiles above Shadowbeak that will fire at you in turn, each dealing moderate damage. Beware though that this attack means three separate chances of freezing you in place, so be prepared to dodge them as needed. Now that we've covered what Shadowbeak can do, let's look at what you can do about it. 200,000 health is a lot to deal with in just 10 minutes, so you're going to want to know what weapon to use, and the answer is simple, it's time to make use of the Assault Rifle. I would very strongly recommend farming the legendary schematic from the Blazemut Alpha Boss. However, I had bad luck on mine. Instead, I got a tier 3 purple one that was good enough to be comfortable with this fight. We use the Assault Rifle because the shotgun is too close quarters. It gives you much lower reaction time to Shadowbeak's attacks and makes it difficult to avoid some of them altogether, whereas the Assault Rifle is much more reliable at range. Make sure that you are using PAL Metal Armor and the Hyper Shield for this fight. I realize that leveling all that way can seem like a slog, but believe me when I say being able to survive some of Shadowbeak's hits will make this fight way, way more tolerable. The main thing that you will want to know is what pals to bring. You'll want dragon types, despite Shadowbeak's icy coverage, just to help you get the damage you need to put Shadowbeak down in time. Jet Dragon is of course an amazing option, and Astagon pulls his weight too. However, Yulmintide Ignis is a great option for both offense and defense. His dragon typing is weak to ice, but his fire typing resists it, resulting in neutrality, and he resists dark as well. This means that he can take the hits while having strong dragon attacks will allow him to deal great damage as well. That being said, Shadowbeak targeted me for almost the entire fight, so I never had to switch out Jet Dragon. 
who was able to chill out on the side and keep dealing huge damage while I concentrated on keeping Shadowbeak busy. Be that as it may, don't rely too heavily on RNG and make sure you bring more than one power to contend with Shadowbeak. Get yourself a team full of the most powerful dragons you can get. And that should be all that you need to know to put Shadowbeak and Victor in the ground. As long as you stay quick on your feet and prepare for the fight, you'll be able to get them down comfortably within the time limit and you may even survive a hit or two if you're careful. Thanks very much guys, if you found this video useful then go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Take care and as always, have fun.